Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the GameSir G4S. This is a wireless game controller that works on Windows through its X input standard, so it acts like a Xbox One controller with no drivers required. And it also works on Android with Bluetooth and we'll be putting it through its paces here in a second. It's pretty nice, they've got an integrated controller mount and all sorts of good stuff on here. But I do want to mention though, in the interest of full disclosure, that GameSir sent us to the channel free of charge for us to review. However, nobody is paying for this review. All the opinions are about to hear are my own and nobody is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a look at the hardware and see what we get here. And this is kind of a sequel to uh, the GameSir G3S that we looked at just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this has got more of a PlayStation 4 design to it. This one is more, uh, you know, kind of inspired by the Xbox controller. So you can take your pick as to what your preferences are. There's two improvements on the hardware though that I actually prefer on this one. The first is that the controller mount is integrated. It's not perfect, but it is integrated so it's not something you have to attach like you did on the other one. Uh, the other thing I like is that the wireless dongle down here uh, plugs in or at least stores itself in uh, this little storage compartment here at the bottom of the controller so you don't lose it. So part of the problem I have with the G3S is that I want to do a giveaway on this and I lost the dongle. I have to find it somewhere in the house here. So there was no place to put it inside the controller on the old one. Uh, they have fixed that on this one. You've got a nice little storage compartment down here. And this dongle is used when you want to use the X input version of the controller's uh, firmware. So if you want this to act like an Xbox One controller, you have to use this. Uh, you plug this into your computer and the controller finds it and it works as an Xbox One controller. Uh, this also works on Android also. So if you do have a Android TV box like the Nvidia Shield or something, it'll work with that. It will also work with phones provided you have an OTG cable if you want to really go through the fuss of that. Uh, or you can connect via Bluetooth over to Android. But I do like how they uh, got these two components here integrated. The problem though is that the, uh, the stand here isn't so good for larger phones like this uh, Moto X. This is kind of a, a large phone, both in its overall size and thickness. So when you put it in here, it just kind of slips out a lot, especially if you're moving the controller around. And they did include like this little uh, extra mounting bracket here, but I couldn't get any better performance even when I was using this in some fashion. I think I had it you know, connected the right, to the right uh, spot on the controller, but it really didn't solve any issues for me. So if you have a larger phone like this Moto X, I don't think it's going to work very well with you, uh, but the OnePlus 3 that we looked at the other day when I did that video uh, does uh, integrate itself quite nicely on here and it stays put. So if you really are looking to buy this controller for Android use with your phone, uh, make sure it's a thinner phone like this one. Uh, thicker phones here like the Moto X are not going to be as good. And you will get kind of a top heavy feel to it, so the, the phone will weight it down a little bit, uh, but it isn't bad and it's a nice way to get uh, all of your stuff integrated. So let's take a look now and see how it performs with Android and then we'll take a look at some Windows stuff too. All right, so we have my OnePlus 3 here running with the MD.EMU emulator. And one thing I did notice is that there is a bit of input delay on the Bluetooth side of things here. So when you are connected via Bluetooth, you can see he's certainly reacting to me, but there's just a little bit of a delay here. And that's why I like to use Sonic the Hedgehog and other retro games, because these are very sensitive to uh, this kind of input delay. You'll definitely notice it and feel it, especially if you've been used to playing these games as long as I have. Now, I did notice there were a couple ways to mitigate that delay a little bit. Uh, one is to get an OTG cable and plug the phone directly into the controller. That's one option. Another option, it's kind of a similar one, uh, is to connect your Android device up with the 2.4 gigahertz adapter. Uh, you can see what kind of input delay we have with the Moto X when I did that. Uh, in this uh, B-roll I'm overlaying here. So uh, there are ways to get around it. Certainly looks like just a function of Bluetooth, but there is a little bit of input delay uh, when you are connected via the Bluetooth radio. Now the controller has a standard Xbox layout, so you've probably seen this before. Uh, you got your thumbsticks where you'd expect them to be. I'll cover those in a few minutes when we get to the PC review, but uh, decent thumbsticks and nice uh, clickable uh, action on those. Uh, the buttons are nice too, decent travel on them and, and a good return as well. Really like the buttons quite a bit. Uh, the directional pad though, I'm not too crazy about. It's a little bit too smooth and slippery for me. I like to have a little bit more of a tactile feel on the directional pad here. It doesn't travel all that far either, so I do prefer the directional pad uh, on the other GameStar controller that we looked at. A uh, nice rubberized grips here, so you get a good uh, good feeling in the hand when you're holding it. Not too heavy, it does feel a little, uh, the plastic doesn't feel as high quality as you might see on a first party Xbox controller, but it isn't bad. I felt worse for sure. Again, you do have the issue with the phone kind of weighting the top of the controller down a bit in your hand, so I don't know how what, what'll, what that'll do for wrist strain uh, on long play periods, but you will feel your phone kind of weighting uh, down the top of the controller a bit when it's attached. Uh, in the back here, you have two analog triggers along with two shoulder buttons and your USB port that you can charge the device with, uh, but also use to plug into your PC or phone. 
All right, so we've got Grand Theft Auto 5 here running on my very shiny laptop, and it seems to be working very nicely, actually. That uh, 2.4 gigahertz adapter installed without any drivers. Everything just came right up right away. Uh, works great in Windows games like this one. You have some rumble to it also. You can adjust the intensity of it. Uh, the analog sticks also have a good amount of sensitivity to them as well. So this is just a very uh, gentle movement here. You can see how, how, how fine the movement you can get on it. And then, of course, I can go a little bit faster here as well as I adjust that stick. So really good response out of that 2.4 gigahertz adapter. You can also plug it in directly if you wish to do that. Also, if you are very concerned about input lag, that will certainly uh, get rid of that and it'll charge the onboard battery as well. Uh, the battery on here is good for uh, tens of hours. I haven't seen any real issues with the battery uh, the whole time I've had it. In fact, I haven't really charged it at all since I got it in here. I haven't been playing all that much with it, but I think you'll definitely get uh, the kind of battery life you would expect out of uh, a controller of this kind, but you can just plug it in via USB here uh, and charge it up when it's not in use. There are a couple of other more features that I want to talk about those so let's take a look at those and then we'll wrap things up now i've got my android phone back on here because there are a few other things worth mentioning one is the select button here and if you hold down select and push the x button unfortunately it passes some input over to the phone at the same time but it enables a mouse input here so you can simulate uh, mouse movement on your android devices this does not work on the windows side i did try it so i think it's only when you're connected via bluetooth uh, to an Android device, you can turn this mouse pointer on. This might be useful if you're using it with an Android TV box or something like that. Uh, to turn it off, you hit select X again. Again, unfortunately, it doesn't ignore the uh, input when you are making that configuration change on the controller. So that's one thing I would have liked to have seen uh, change on there. There's also a turbo button. And the way this works is you can assign turbo uh, to specific buttons. So what you do is uh, hold down turbo and the buttons that you wish to have act in a turbo mode. And it will uh, basically activate turbo on just those buttons, but not other one. So if you just want X to be turbo, you hold down turbo and X uh, and you can enable that or you can hold on X and Y and hold down turbo and have both of those act in turbo mode. But uh, B and A uh, can act independently without a turbo mode. So a little bit of a extra configuration that they threw into this. That was something I saw on the other version of their controller too. But as nice as this controller is, the price is going to be a little bit of a surprise. It is $70, which is a lot more than the prior generation controller, which is selling for $26 right now. So you can get two of these for less than the price of one of these. And there really isn't any significant feature differences here beyond the hardware design and the integrated bracket and the uh, spot to store the dongle. This one pretty much does everything this one does, which is really surprising that they would uh, take a turn and really raise their price on their controllers so much. Because I think what a lot of gamers uh, came to love about GameSir was the fact that you could get a really decent controller for very little money. But now we're seeing them uh, pricing themselves into an area where I guess a lot of their competitors are, which is kind of unfortunate because they've been kind of the value brand for a while, uh, delivering some good stuff at a good price. But uh, at $70, it's hard to recommend this one uh, over this one because they really do the same thing and they're both very good controllers. So my advice at the moment is uh, if you are in the market for a controller that works on both your Windows machine and your Android phone, uh, look at this one. Even though it's a little bit less convenient with the bracket and everything, uh, the price is so much less on these and there really isn't that big of a difference between the two insofar as how they perform. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.